thing by being able to at least explore the options. So what we've been doing is, let's say you're getting married in October or November of this year, we're just opening up the option of saying, okay, let's find out when all your vendors are available. Let's find out when your venue is available. Let's kind of, you know, put this all on a grid and let's come up with some dates that might work. Mm -hmm. And we're not ready to pull the trigger yet and just move. But at least you have all the information and you know what you can potentially do. And I think it's great to have these options of, okay, let's keep it this year, but we know what, could, you know, what dates we have available for next year. And I think it makes people feel a little bit better knowing that they have an option B and a backup plan if they really need it. Um, um, yeah, I'm going to interrupt you for a crazy. second. I have a question though. Um, you know, I've, I've got a lot of members now in Lady Drinks, and there's a lot of doctors who are talking about the social distancing, even with people in the waiting room. So when you've got 300, 400 people that are expected to show up to a joyous occasion like this, how is this social distancing part going to work? Are you thinking about that? Yeah, we were just on a Zoom call. Uh, we've been on two Zoom calls this week that just spoke about that because Greece opened up and Greece is a huge destination travel market for us uh, for weddings. And um, now they're only allowing like three to four people per table. So if you imagine only four people on a 72 inch round that can normally hold 10 to 12 and you have a 300 person wedding. I, these are a lot of tables that you need to accommodate this many people and you need a massive venue for something like this, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what's happening in Greece right now and kind of following suit on what they're doing. I mean, the United States hasn't like announced anything of the sorts just yet, but we really, all of our new, new brides for next year, we're really telling them like, get a bigger venue. Like if you think you're gonna have like 300 guests, get a venue that can hold like 600 or 700 because you just don't know what's going to happen between now and even April, May, June, July of next year. And if these regulations go into place, you can't really be like, Oh my God, I now need to find a new, new venue. So I think that that portion of it, we're really, really seriously focusing on at our company, but also just, hiring caterers that are you know going to do sit down dinners and not just do buffets um you know what is their protocol going to be how are they handling masks gloves their staffing like food handling and i think that it it's also communicating with our vendors to kind of figure out like what are we going to be offering our clients for next year that's not nearly like it's, it doesn't really have to be like just a state mandate or a government mandate but just like for us as professionals what are we doing to keep people safe i also wonder if maybe there's going to be a sea change where people are just going to opt to have more intimate weddings where it can't be 300 people because the budget just doesn't allow for a 600 person space could you see that in the future yeah, I think that a lot of folks are really, um, you know, if they were going to have a 300 person wedding this year, they're really thinking about, okay, what is my guest list looking like for next year? And how it's not, sometimes it's not just about the couple deciding, but their guests are going to decide for themselves. Am I going to get on a plane and head to New York City for this wedding? Or am I going to go to New Jersey for this wedding? Because a lot of our guests come from all over. And, you know, a lot, a lot of times, especially the international guests that are taking these flights from India, or that are, you know, taking these flights from the Far East, I mean, they are on a flight for a really long time trying to get to your wedding. So I think that sometimes it's just going to be, okay, we're going to send out the invites, and we're going to see what happens. And a lot of my couples for this year, I'm still encouraging them, because you know, for, for some people, it's really important. Okay, I have to get married this year. Um, I want to start a family next year, et cetera, et cetera. So we're still encouraging them, hey, do your wedding this year. Have it be very small, very intimate. I was just on a call with a company, which is fantastic. They just came out with this whole, um, it's not like a Zoom call, but it's, it's almost like a virtual way of getting married, which is very beautiful, elegant, the backdrop that they send you that you put up. So it's not like, oh, I'm going to get married in front of this brick wall, let's just say. Mm -hmm. And you can, you know, there's a link you send out and it's, um, it's a very upscale version of Zoom, let's just say. And it's for the couple that still wants to get married this year and keep plugging away with the rest of their life because how long are you gonna really wait sometimes, you know? And so is the technology such that everybody's gonna be able to dial in virtually and wish Correct. you well? Correct. 
So let's say the priest is there and then um, the couple is there, their family members are social distancing at home, but then this company comes with a professional camera crew that is doing this whole thing virtually for the rest of your guests that can basically dial in, join in to be able to, to see your ceremony. And then I think, you know, next year or even 2020, 22, people can do something that's more celebratory for a smaller number of people. But I think that it's only going to, time really is, you know, the deciding factor of what's going to happen. I mean, I still encourage guests, send out the invitations and, you know, especially for South Asian weddings, if you've gone to all these other people's weddings, then they're going to eventually come to your wedding because it's, it's more, um, it's more like a, um, for Indian weddings, it's just the thing to do, right? I mean, that's why these weddings get to be so big. What are, what are some of the advice that we haven't touched upon that you are telling brides? I remember you saying that if you are thinking of a 2021 wedding, um, now's the time to really think and plan. But now it sounds like that maybe that planning time, that latitude isn't there anymore. Well, it's, it's really crazy for next year. I mean, 2021 and even into 2022, because let's face it, there's, you know, X number of days that are auspicious and only, you know, Y number of days that are auspicious and fall on a weekend, right? So we're just really like the things that we go through to pick dates that are auspicious and, you know, all these things, um, there's just few and far between. So everybody that's moving from this year to next year is also affecting all the brides who are originally going to be planning to get married in 2021. So there's just like this whole dichotomy of j things that I've never seen before in 18 years. And it's not just for venues and couples. It's also for vendors because now like vendors are okay. My one bride from 2020 wants to move to 2021, but I'm getting this whole influx of calls for 2021. So how do I balance all this? And a lot of your luxury vendors only like we only do two weddings a month right just for our own sanity and the customer service that we provide we only really do two we don't ever double book a wedding and then we only do two weddings a month so it really makes it challenging to accommodate everything that's going on so it sounds like a lot of patience is going to be in order uh, come 2021 if if you are planning to get married correct and i've also been telling a lot of new clients like I get it. Everybody wants to get married on a Saturday, but in India, people get married on a Tuesday or they get married on a Wednesday. Like it's not that big of a deal, especially if you can get your venue and you can get your vendors and you still have a beautiful wedding and people are still able to travel, you know, just open up these dates so that you're a little bit more at peace as to what is available and making sure that you get what, you know, what's, what's going to make you happy. I think one of the things that's signature about you is that you do a lot of exotic vacations, vacation destination weddings. What are some um, what are some countries, some places that people haven't considered that you think are like a real gem? It's an undiscovered gem. And if Greece or Italy and uh, Spain or Mexico or all the places that you've already done weddings aren't available, what's a nice tucked away place that you'd recommend? Uh, the, there's so many beautiful places. Um, I'm very fortunate because I get to travel a lot and I love to travel as everybody knows. Um, honestly, being stuck in one location for eight weeks, I don't remember the last time that I was in the same city for eight weeks at a stretch. So um, I think that, I, you know, my favorite places, I mean, I love Italy and we've talked about like Lake Como. I think it's absolutely gorgeous especially for indian weddings um there's just i think that there's just some it's so charming and the character um that italy has any different city that you go to i think is just beautiful um we recently a lot of our weddings are getting smaller right so um they're talking about these private buyouts and there's a ton of small islands in the caribbean that literally you could just it's just you and your guests there's nobody else there and it's perfect for hosting like a hundred person wedding um we were approached by some places in the maldives same thing you just buy out i mean it's one resort per island in the Maldives, you buy out the whole resort, it's just you. But some of these properties are gorgeous, they're stunning. And it's like, it, you know, people want to create an experience for their guests. And this is like an experience like no other. And I think that, you know, some of these places are thought about as more like 
honeymoonish destinations, but that doesn't mean you can you don't have to take like a hundred people and you could just do this phenomenal wedding that would really, really be very special for your guests. Um, I think we're all about creating guest experiences. Um, a lot of our clients were, when I hope so still for next year into 2022, um, we're doing Switzerland, Italy, um, France, Greece, and these places are amazing. And I think that, you know, even Mexico is great, but there's so many Indian weddings that happen there that I think if you're really looking for something that's like the exclamation point, these places yeah. are amazing. I, like you, love to travel. And um, I'm lamenting that I haven't been able to do Argentina and Italy as I was planning to in these last couple months. Um, I just on Lark, I was just calling the same vendors that I was using for my travel to see if I could rent a villa in Italy for 4th of July, or if we could do our wine tour of Mendoza in Argentina. And some of those countries aren't even actually allowing commercial flights to land and especially right. not. And if you're coming from New York, I'm being told that you could be put in quarantine for 14 days. So 14 days, yeah. you, you know, you're on the front lines this is my last question. Um, what countries do you think are probably going to be a little more lax about that? Well, we were just on a call with um, people from Greece, and there is um, someone from the Switzerland um, Board of Tourism there. So I think Switzerland opened up this week, so you're able to still travel there. We have an amazing wedding next May that's taking place in Switzerland. It's about 300 guests. So I'm very excited about that. And then Greece just opened up. Yes, they're practicing a whole lot of social distancing, but you know those two locations are open. And I'm sure like little by little, other countries will open up. Um, but yeah, at least those two places for the time being, I know for sure are open. Okay. Well, so, um, so this has been great. Um, I always enjoy learning some business savvy from you. Any last parting thoughts um, that you'd like to share? Um, I think that uh, we spoke about this before, but, you know, if you're a person that's like just starting out and you're just starting out a new small business, um, get a phenomenal team. I have uh, a couple of assistants that literally they just keep me saying there's no way um, I could do my job without them. And I think it really, really helps to have that other person or two other people that really understand you, your vision, what you're trying to do for your company. And again, it's an investment, right? I mean, these are paid employees. And I think that this is really something that um, everybody should invest in. I know a lot of small businesses that's just like the owner and then that's it. And I right. think your business would go so much further if you really invested in someone. And it's relinquishing that control, right? We talked about that before, but when someone really gets you and you spend the time and invest in them and teach them, um, it's you can't put a price tag on what kind of peace of mind that brings you. I love hiring people that are infinitely smarter than me. And I just me hired too. a VA me in too. the last <laughs> few months because, and, and, but she also had complementary skills, right? Like she is far more technologically savvy than I have the bandwidth to be. And I consider myself above average in terms of being able to grasp technology, but she knows way more. And that I don't need to, I don't need to learn a whole new skill set. She's already got it. So she's complementary to what I'm doing. And I she just wants to know how to help. That's the attitude with which she comes to the table. And, and it's a co-creation at the end of the day. And I think that you're right. It, it came to a point where I was wasting energy on admin tasks that were better spent some, having somebody else do them. I always say you can learn from everyone and every situation you're put in. And I am like so fortunate because we get interns and I mean, they're 21 or, you know, 22 and they are like a wealth of knowledge. The things that they know I just, I don't even know. And just the way they yeah. do things, um, I'm, I'm floored almost every single day because I'm like, oh, how do I figure this out? And they just know it like that. And you're right, you yeah. want to surround yourself with people that are smarter than you because it, at, at the end of the day, especially when you're a business owner, you need someone to tell you, you know what, this is good, this is bad, this, you know, this is my opinion on this. And you want people to be able to bounce ideas off of, for sure and make sure that they have a voice. I know that you have a voice. Thank you, Sono, for your time today. You. I'm gonna Thank put this so uh, IG Live up on my stories as soon as we're finished here. If someone wants to get in touch with you, what's the best way? Uh, they can just email me, Sono, at sjsevents.com. And if they go to our website, www.sjsevents.com, my cell phone number is on there and I'm very accessible.
and I'll offer the same. You're a Lady Drinks member. Thank you for your support through this time and your contributions to the community. And if anyone wants to reach me, you can get me at joya at ladydrinks.com and the website is ladydrinks.com. Everybody have a great weekend. Thank you, you two. Thank you so much for having me. Bye. Bye.